Hey there, Fletch Mall Things Overlanding here. And today I wanted to do a longer term update on my 2023 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. When I initially did my first one, I'd had it for about 2,500 miles in a few months. Now I've had it for about six months and I've put almost 11,000 miles on the truck. So some of the quirks have kind of worked their way out and I wanted to talk through some of those quirks, some of the things I really like about the truck and some of the things I really don't like about the truck. So again, consider this a longer term update, 10,000 plus miles on a 2023 Frontier. It's been to Wyoming, it's been to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, it's been to Wisconsin, I've been off-roading quite a bit in it. So I have a lot of new thoughts and new sort of information to share with you guys. So if you wanna learn more about 2023 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X and kind of the pros and cons and my thoughts on it after 10,000, 11,000 plus miles. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so as I mentioned in the intro, today I'm talking about my 2023 Frontier again. Uh, for those of you that are looking at these trucks, I want to give you as much information about them now, having more time behind the steering wheel and sort of some of the weirdnesses and quirks and stuff that I've figured out. So let's start with the last video that I made about this truck. I'll put a card up here to it so that if you want to go check that out, that was sort of my initial impressions around 2,500 miles or so. Um, right before I took a really big trip, I actually went all the way out from Indiana to Wyoming in this truck. Uh, a lot of highway stuff. Then we were off-road for two weeks, just off-roading the truck, living out of the truck with a rooftop tent and a fridge and that sort of thing. Um, so spent a lot of time in this truck using a lot of the features. So again, check out that video if you want kind of the initial impressions, and then this will be sort of what's changed and what I've learned since that initial video. All right, so let's start with the engine and transmission. So the engine and transmission, nine-speed automatic, uh, 3.8 liter V6 is a fantastic combination. So this engine and transmission's actually been around for three or four years, even in the previous body style truck, they just carried it over for the new truck. The thing is amazing. I will say shortly after that initial video that I made, I did start to have some sort of weirdness and finickiness of the transmission. So sort of some hard shifts sometimes, uh, kind of hunting for gears and things like that. And at first I was actually a little bit worried. Uh, there has not been a, a huge a uh, number of complaints about the truck, transmission and engine wise, but there have been some people on the Facebook groups and, and on the forums and stuff that have said that at 20,000 miles or something, they had to get a transmission replaced. Now, it is a newer body style truck. It does have some newness to it. So there are some possibilities that there are some problems with the QA. So it's not to say that it's impossible, but the vast majority of these trucks have had no problems. And again, when I first noticed it, I was like, okay, whoa, why are we clunking, right? Why is this sort of clunking from one gear to the next? Why is it sort of hesitating? Sometimes I'd get some hesitation, maybe from like fourth or fifth shifting up a gear, where it would kind of hold the gear a little bit longer before it would shift. They were mildly concerning initially. Um, since then though, so now that I put a few miles on the truck, and again, I've got 10,600 miles on the truck right now, and I'm gonna put another 800 on it today. It has been fantastic. The transmission is smoothed out. I don't have any of the weirdness anymore. I don't have any more of the uh, sort of clunkiness of it, it will, it's way smoother. It's it's actually, I'm very impressed with the transmission because, you know, I had an Infiniti Q50 before with the Jackco 7 speed. I think it's a Jackco 7 speed. And that thing was, I hated it. And I'm a Nissan guy, Infiniti guy, but that thing was, it could never decide what gear it'd be in. You'd be going, you know, 20 around a roundabout, it would suddenly decide to throw you down into second gear and everyone would turn and look at you that's like walking their dogs because it sounded like you're trying to race car drive through this this roundabout. In this truck, the transmission is extremely smooth. Once it kind of, you know, got a little bit of miles on it and got some usage into it, it has smoothed out drastically. And now it you barely even notice it shifting and it's been fantastic. So next let's talk about the steering because this is one of the things that everybody wants to know about and they're constantly complaining about it. So here's the thing, my maybe my opinion is slightly different, but I've had truck, 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 truck recently. So I had a 2005 Nissan Xterra. I had a 2008 Nissan Frontier that was Titan swapped. So it had a wider track and had 35s on it that were very wide. They were like 12 and a half inch tires. Um, so like compared to all that, this is fine. I will say that the turning radius is really wide. So like if you watched other videos about the Nissan Frontier, you'll hear it. If you look at the comments, people are complaining and moaning about it. I had one guy that was like my Honda, my wife's Honda Pilot turns like a race car and this thing doesn't. And that's true. My wife has a pilot too, and it does turn a lot 
better than this truck. You can get it into a parking lot at the grocery store a lot easier, right? That is definitely true. However, the thing that I would encourage you to keep in mind is that this is a pickup truck, right? So if you are looking for something that's gonna drive like a car, this isn't your vehicle. So to kind of put a wrap on the steering, yes, your steering radius is gonna be really wide. If you struggle to parallel park, if you have to parallel park a lot, if you have to park in parking lots a lot, you, I get used to it. I just belly out a little bit and I kind of go wide and I go close to the car to my left and then I come back over and I'm fine. You can drive around it, you definitely can. It just depends on what you want to do, right? If you want something that's going to handle like a sportier vehicle, then the Frontier is probably not for you. All right, so next let's touch on suspension. So suspension on this truck stock, I actually, for the Pro 4X model, you do get the upgraded Bilstein uh, shocks on it, which are really, really nice. They feel great on the truck. You get some nice wheels and some 30, almost 32 inch tires. The hand kooks are just okay. They're nothing special. They're ATs. They, because of their size being smaller, I actually got really good gas mileage. But with just the stock setup of this truck, I was getting 20, 21 miles per gallon at the high end, 18, 19 on the low end, just kind of depending on my driving style and how fast I was going and whether it was city or highway. And, uh, and but the suspension felt really, really good. So it's a really supple sort of soft suspension. It rides really nice. Off-road, it feels great. Even with sway bars on, this thing has been super capable. I've had no problems doing any obstacles through Wyoming, through the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, through Wisconsin trails. So nothing super challenging, no, you know, Ozarks, no Moabi type stuff. But, uh, but for the stuff that I've been through, it's been perfectly acceptable. Um, there are a lot of upgrades for suspensions. I will put a card up here to a video that I made about the suspension that I'm running on the truck and sort of the overall overlanding build that I've done for the truck. So if you want to learn more about the vehicle modifications that I've made, uh, click on that up there. But just talking about it from a stock standpoint, really, really great suspension, rides great, feels great. Technology and interior slash comforts. All right, so the interior is leaps and bounds above the old truck. So again, if you're coming from like an older Nissan truck, you're gonna love the interior of this. They have these anti-grav seats that they've had in other Nissan cars for a while that people love, like Maximas have had them and just other cars, but it's never made its way into the trucks. And they are the best. Um, so these seats are phenomenal. They are super comfortable. After putting, you know, 10, almost 11,000 miles on the truck, sitting in these things, driving long days, 12, 13, 14 hour days, going to Wyoming, on the trail in Wyoming, the seats, in my opinion, are one of the best upgrades they've ever done to these trucks. They're so comfortable, they're so nice. So if you haven't sat in them, if you're considering this, comparing this truck, and you're just looking at specs or whatever against like a Tacoma or whatever else, definitely go sit in it and drive it for a little bit. See if you can drive it to lunch or something, right? See if the dealership will let you take it somewhere where you can spend 20, 30 minutes in it at least and just enjoy the seats because they are really phenomenal. Um, so mine does not have leather or the sunroof, but that's pretty much it. I've got the Fender Premium Audio. It came with pretty much everything else. So it's a pretty loaded out Pro 4X because I wanted the Pro 4X. I wanted the rear locking differential. I wanted the nice things like the LED headlights, the fog lights. There were a lot of nice features that come on this truck that don't really even have anything to do with off-roading but just make it a much better place to be for long periods of time, which is essentially what overlanding is. A lot of the times, uh, you know, you are, you're spending a lot of time driving, right? Like I said, in that Wyoming trip, I mean, we had like about three days of 10 to 12 hour days driving. And, uh, and I didn't want it to be a horrible, you know, buckboard type of experience. I wanted it to be a really comfortable, nice ride. Even without the leather, and the sunroof, you still get or can get. I've got heated seats. I've got a heated steering wheel that's really phenomenal. This morning it was in the low 30s, 40s, low 40s this morning, and I turned on my steering wheel and I turned on my seat, and it was awesome. It's just so nice to have those features. It has remote start. So, like again, for my application of camping, or if you're just someone that lives in the Midwest like me and you have cold weather and stuff, being able to hold a button for a few seconds and kick the truck on and, and heat it up, defrost it. Um, it has defrosting heated mirrors heat up your seats, you know, that sort of thing. It's really nice. It's just a nice, a much nicer place to be. Um, so the things that I don't like include really just the tech nanny stuff, right? So to me, that's just a personal preference. Some people really like them. I will say I don't hate when it like beeps at me when I'm backing up towards my garage. It's kind of a nice, helpful thing. I mean, I'm pretty observant. I, I kind of find that then I start to rely on that, which I don't really care for. I, I want to be observant and aware of my surroundings. I really don't like the front facing sensors that beep at you when you like start to merge over into a lane. The auto braking I really don't like. So what that is basically is with the rear sensor if you're backing up and it senses something behind you, 
it will automatically apply the brakes. If it thinks you're gonna hit something, it will automatically brake for you. Now you can disable this by hitting down on your center console, the P with the little uh, like sonar coming out of it. You can hit the little parking assist sonar light and you can, uh, you can disable those. So that's kind of nice. If, if you just do that, then it's not so bad. The thing is you don't always remember, right? So I'll give you some examples of when this has been sucky for me and why I don't like it. So for example, if you have a tailgate down, if you are backing into your driveway, but you've got some lumber in it or something, and you've got your tailgate down, it will constantly sense the ground, right? And it will kick on the brakes. So again, before I realized how to turn this thing off, I'm like, oh my God, why is this? I can't back out of my spot at Lowe's because it won't stop braking. And then I realized, oh, you can hit the parking assist button and you can turn it off. When you do that, it's not so bad. So overall, the interior is a huge upgrade over the old ones. And it, if you're going to be spending a lot of time driving to places to go camping or, or you know, hauling a lot of lumber, just, just around town. I mean, you know, that's, I don't know why trucks became just sort of a super utilitarian place where it was terrible to be. I also don't really want to spend $70,000 on a truck because of the nice features and stuff that it has. So uh, this is a good middle ground for like low to mid 40s, depending on the deal that you get from the dealership to have all the features of a Pro 4X and all these nice, you know, technology things, the big touch screen, the car play, all that stuff, wireless charging, really, really nice place to be. Um, so let's talk about configurations next. This is something that I've kind of, I've gotten used to my configuration, but I, I didn't even really realize the number of configurations that you can get this truck in. And what I mean by that is like the quad cab, like I've got, or a king cab, which is like an extended cab with sort of the suicide doors in the back or you know that sort of thing and then the different bed lengths too a lot of people complain about the five foot bed which is what mine has you can get this with a six foot bed um, but so there are a lot of trucks that have just kind of gone to like pretty much permanent quad caps and permanent short beds you just can't get the level of flexibility that you might need again based on your needs so if you want to haul lumber more often if you want to tow stuff but so those configurations are really nice if you go to the nissanusa.com website and you look at that, you can again figure out what kind of payload you want. They have different payloads based on the length of the bed. But so yeah, look at those configurations on the website, but you have a lot of options, which I like that Nissan did that. They kept in mind the truck owner, right? They wanted to give you options based on your needs, which I really think is cool. So now let's move to exterior, right? I still, I mean, I've loved these trucks since they first announced them, since they showed them. I think it's one of the best looking truck designs out there. I really love how Tacomas look too, but there's just something a little bit beefier, a little bit meatier about the Nissan. It at least puts it in the same ballpark as like the current gen Toyota Tacomas. So I personally think the exterior is phenomenal. It's awesome. Also another benefit, if you are a Nissan person and you are looking to carry over some of your parts, a lot of the second gen stuff fits because they didn't change the the specs on a lot of this stuff. So even though it looks different and there's some different, you know, sort of look to it, it it is basically the same. I can confirm for a fact I have an extrusion overland bed rack that was intended for my second gen truck that I never got around to installing on that truck and it fit perfect on the third gen. So bed racks should carry over from a second gen frontier to a third gen frontier. Sliders should carry over from a second gen frontier to a third gen frontier. I'm pretty sure, but I need to confirm still that the, uh, the the skids underneath for my old truck will carry over to the new one. The only thing that gets a little wonky is bumpers. So because of the complete redesign of the fascia on the front, the bumpers don't really carry over. I think that the rear bumpers though probably would carry over with cutting. So again, it's, it's nice because it's not like, while this is a new truck, we're not, we Nissan owners, right, are not starting from scratch and a whole brand new vehicle that we have to wait for three to five years for the aftermarket to catch up we can use second gen stuff, which is really nice. So now let's talk a little bit about like, just I have almost 11,000 miles on it, like I mentioned. So longevity, kind of my expectations for it. Again, I bought this truck because it's a naturally aspirated V6. I've had about 10 or 12 different Nissans in the last 20 or so years, and they've all been phenomenally reliable for me. So that's kind of what pushed me towards the Nissan family, I guess, if you will, again, with this truck. I had that old Frontier, I wanted to upgrade, I wanted the new features and tech, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to necessarily pay 55 or 60 grand for like a top of the line Tacoma or, you know, even maybe that's high, right? 52 to 55 is kind of what I was seeing on the TRD Pros and that sort of thing with some of the features that made it comparable to this truck. Whereas this one's again, low to mid 40. So, I mean, it's a pretty significant savings, right? So let's finish this up with pricing and sort of value for the money, which I think is where the Frontier wins big time. The pricing of this truck, again, as I mentioned, I want to say they start in like low 30s, maybe super high 20s, like 29 something for a base model two wheel drive. Um, the Pro 4X with, you know, again, I bought my Pro 4X six months ago, seven months ago. And I was in that time, we were still paying MSRP. 
Like I got maybe a few hundred bucks off MSRP and then I had a trade which helped offset the cost too. And that was pretty much how I did it. But I went for the one with all the options except leather and sunroof and it has the Fender Premium Audio which I'm a big proponent of. I really like it. I think, is it worth 750 bucks? No, of course. I could spend the time and energy to go buy all the speakers, tear apart all the door panels, put them in, install an aftermarket sub. If you're a big audiophile, you'll probably want to do that anyways. I was just like, you know what, What's the, I'm spending mid 40s for this truck anyways, what's another 750 bucks, right? If I don't have to do the work and it's a good sounding sound system, then it's good enough for me. And that's kind of where I'm at on it. It is a perfectly fine sound system. I like having that versus the stock stuff because it does bump a little bit better. It has a little bit clearer audio and it sounds really good. Um, but so for pricing for the Pro 4X, loaded out with the premium audio, with the side steps, with all the options. I even got the, the you know, like the emergency supply kit, which is kind of cool, but definitely not worth the 550 that they quoted out on the sticker. With all that stuff and taxes and everything out the door, I'm in Indiana, 7% sales tax, dock fees, everything. I think out the door, I was about 46. And then of course we took the trade off from there. But so my total sale price was about 46 grand out the door on the truck. I think that's... It's a lot of money for me, right? Like I'm by no means rich or anything. That's probably the, that is the most money I've ever spent on a vehicle between my wife and I. That's the most expensive vehicle I've ever bought. But still, my plan with this truck is to run it for 10 to 12 years. And even with the Wyoming trip and some of these things, my average miles that I put on this truck per year are about eight to 12,000. So call it 10 years and let's go on the high side and say I put 12,000 a year. That's a 120,000 mile truck. My Xterra that I had had 150,000 miles on it and ran like it was brand new. It needed some brake work, it needed some you know, wearable parts work, it needed some some work on the uh, the suspension and stuff that was just the ball joints and things were wearing out. Um, but that was pretty much it. From an engine and transmission standpoint, a reliability standpoint, it was perfect, it felt great. And I probably could've got another 75 to 100,000 miles out of it with very minimal maintenance. Probably would've had to do the timing chain guides and that's about it. So that's kind of my thought on this truck too, is Yes, it costs a lot more money. However, those older trucks, you start to get into that maintenance. You start to get into those costs to redo all your ball joints, your hubs, your, you know, your brakes, your rotors, your pads. All that stuff is going to add up too. Whereas if I can kind of control how easy I am on the truck, how, how nice I treat the truck, I know all the history of it. I don't have to worry about people that have had it before me that have maybe done things like on my last truck that were less than ideal, that caused problems, that then cost me a bunch of money down the road, right? So that's what kind of justified it for me. Another thing is the peace of mind. Uh, my buddy and I, my buddy in the Jeep behind me right now, and I are on our way to Southern Indiana together right now to go camping. And he was like, I bet it feels really nice to just know that you can get up and the truck's gonna start. You have absolutely no concerns whether it's gonna run well or how it's gonna run. You know it's gonna be a solid, reliable truck. And you've got the heated seats and the remote start. You can start it from your rooftop tent when you wake up in the morning, warm it up, get down, pack up, hop in, be ready to go. And he's absolutely right. Like that is a huge piece of it that I've just been missing for the last four or five years that I've been doing the camping, off-roading, overlanding thing is it's always been kind of a concern. Like, am I going to be out in the middle of nowhere and have to like walk out and call for help? Whereas on this new truck, I think I'll get a ton of life out of it. And then I'll have decent resale value because these trucks are holding their value really well compared to a lot of earlier Nissans because they're very desirable. So let's kind of wrap this whole video up with my final thoughts. Laying my biases out there. Again, I'm a Nissan person. I've had Toyotas. I've had Lexuses. Um, I've had Hondas. My wife has a Honda right now. I love Hondas, but the Ridgeline just does not compare from a, an off-roading capability standpoint. Will it steer better? If you were one of those folks earlier in the video, if you're still watching, and you want something that steers like, uh, you know, like a small car, then get a Honda Ridgeline. Those things are great. But uh, for me, it, it's a body-on-frame truck. It's a rigid, rugged sort of truck. It's got a rear locker. Um, and it's just, it's something that I'm familiar with and that I really like with a lot of really nice upgrades. So. I highly recommend the truck. I mean, even after 10, 11,000 miles, I highly recommend the truck. I haven't had any problems. I will do a further updated one as I continue to put miles on it out in the future, right? If I have any problems, of course, I'll make an update video talking about those problems, being transparent with you guys. But I mean, really, this thing has been great and I don't have any concerns about it because of the, just the simplicity and the, the, the amount of standardization that Nissan's kind of built into these trucks over the last 15 years. The fact that this is very similar to those trucks with some nice upgrades, some better fuel efficiency, and a better transmission and engine, great. I love it. So again, I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, click that like button. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, again, I will be releasing a ton of third-gen Nissan Frontiers content because there's not enough of that out there for us, right? We Nissan people get overlooked and ignored all the time. So I want to bring you guys those helpful things. I've done a lot of do-it-yourself sort of 
modifications. I've done a lot of like how-to videos for this truck, how to change your adaptive cruise to non-adaptive cruise. So I've basically kind of done videos on how to do that. The auto fill air system is a really cool thing. If you don't know about that, go check out that video on my channel too. Um, but there is a, I have a playlist on my channel called 2023 Nissan Frontier, I think. And that is where all those videos live. So go watch that playlist and it should give you all the content that you need about this truck. So whether you're buying one, have one, either way, it'll be helpful for you, I promise. Um, also in the description down below will be links to all my social channels. So again, wherever you want to hang out, come hang out. There is a link to my Patreon group. We've got a Patreon group with a 24-7 Discord, and we do a once a month call, which is a lot of fun. We all kind of hop on a Zoom and chat through our gear and our rigs and our setups and questions and things like that. And then last but not least, there's the Newbie Overlanders group, which is a free to join Facebook group, a private group where I kind of manage it so that you don't get a bunch of those bullies, you don't get people making fun of people. It's just a much more sort of newbie friendly group. So if you're newer to overlanding, you want to check it out, go car camping out of your frontier or whatever vehicle you have, definitely check that group out. Um, but again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.